Link Portal Online School presents Auxiliary Verbs Be, Do, Have in English English Grammar Lesson Auxiliary verbs, often referred to as helping verbs, play a crucial role in English grammar. They work alongside main verbs to form various tenses, moods and voices in sentences. The primary auxiliary verbs in English are be, have and do, which can be conjugated in various forms to match the subject and tense of the sentence. Understanding how to correctly use auxiliary verbs is essential for constructing clear and grammatically accurate sentences. This guide will explore the functions, forms and uses of auxiliary verbs, providing a comprehensive understanding of their role in English grammar. Let's start with auxiliary verb be. The auxiliary verb be is used to form continuous or progressive tenses, passive voice and certain grammatical structures in English. It's worth to name the forms of the verb be. Present form, am, is, are. Past form, was, were. Present participle, being. Past participle, been. Auxiliary be forms continuous tenses by combining with the present participle, verb plus ing, to indicate ongoing actions. For example, she is studying English at the moment. Present continuous. They were playing football when the rain started. Past continuous. Auxiliary be forms passive voice by combining with the past participle to indicate that the subject is acted upon. For example, the book is written by the author. Present passive. The cake was baked by John. Past passive. Auxiliary be is used in various future tenses and other grammatical structures. For example, she will be travelling tomorrow. Future continuous. They are going to visit the museum. Going to future. Understanding the auxiliary verb be is crucial for mastering different verb forms and constructing accurate and meaningful sentences in English. We will continue with the auxiliary verb do. The auxiliary verb do is primarily used to form questions, make negatives and add emphasis in English. Its forms include present form, do, does, past form, did, depending on the tense and the subject. Do helps to form questions in the present simple and past simple tenses. For example, do you like coffee? Does she play tennis? Present simple. Did they go to the party? Past simple. Do helps to form negative sentences in the present simple and past simple tenses. For example, I do not, don't, know the answer. He does not, doesn't, like fish. Present simple. She did not, didn't, see the movie. Past simple. Do helps to add emphasis to affirmative sentences. For example, I do want to go to the concert. Present simple. She did finish her homework on time. Past simple. Understanding the auxiliary verb do is essential for constructing questions, negatives and emphatic statements accurately in English. And the final auxiliary verb is have. The auxiliary verb have is used to form perfect tenses in English which express actions that are completed or connected to the present or another point in time. Its forms include have, has, and had, depending on the tense and the subject. Have or has, for third-person singular subjects, combines with the past participle to indicate actions that occurred at an unspecified time before now or have relevance to the present moment. Examples. I have seen that movie. She has finished her work. Present perfect tense. 
had is used with the past participle to indicate actions that were completed before another past action. They had left before the party started. Past perfect tense. Have is used with been and the present participle to show actions that were ongoing up to a point in time. For example, I have been studying for three hours. Present perfect continuous. She had been working there for five years before she moved. Past perfect continuous. Will have combines with the past participle to indicate actions that will be completed before a specified future time. Example. By next year, I will have graduated. Future perfect tense. Understanding the auxiliary verb have is essential for forming perfect tenses and expressing the completion and duration of actions in relation to time. In summary, auxiliary verbs in English act as supportive elements that enhance the meaning and structure of sentences. They are used to indicate states, emphasize actions, form questions, and express negations. Stay with us and enjoy your English learning. I wish you to achieve fluency in English and gain the confidence to use it effectively in both spoken and written communication.